And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there. For a new deck, we have Sultai Neoform. So this looks to be a pretty sweet donation deck here. So what we're trying to do here with this deck is we are trying to self-mill ourselves. Uh, we have these Stitcher Suppliers and Glow Spore Shamans that, that help us mill ourselves. We even have Tamios to flip over a bunch of cards as well. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to get a lot of lands in our graveyard. And so when we have a lot of lands in the graveyard, then we have World Shaper. And World Shaper also mills yourself. Whenever it attacks, you, you put three cards from your library to your graveyard. But then whenever it dies, you put all lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So we're trying to self-mill ourselves, get a whole bunch of lands in the graveyard, and then have our World Shaper die to put all of these lands into play. So if we need World Shaper to die, we have a few ways to do that. We have, of course, Neoform. Uh, namesake of our of our deck here because Neoform can not only go find World Shaper but then also uh, sacrifice uh, World Shaper as well. Um, so those two are, are like really the two headlining cards in the deck. We have a, l a few other things with like Plague Crafter, uh, Bantu to sacrifice it. I guess Massacre Girl can maybe kill it as well. Plus just attacking. You know like World Shaper is still a 3-3 three, three, where if you're just attacking for three every turn your opponent's going to have to block and, you know, probably kill it. And then when you have a whole lot of lands in play, whenever World Shaper dies, puts a ton of lands into play, um, then we have uh, Hydroid Crasis. With all of our lands, we get to cast a super big Hydroid Crasis. <clears throat> you know, whenever we have, like, 15 lands or whatever. And uh, the other thing that we're doing, the other reason, besides that, like, part of the self-mill... Also, self-milling, we put a lot of creatures in the graveyard, and whenever we have a lot of creatures in the graveyard, we're just going to, like, maybe kill people with Lotleth Giant. You know, like, they may uh, not realize that we're going to have this Lotleth Giant here and kind of surprise them. Like, maybe they take a couple of hits against the World Shaper because they don't want to kill it, and then we surprise them and Lotleth Giant them. Uh, Tamio just kind of makes, makes the whole deck kind of stick together. Because whenever you're self-milling your stuff, it makes Tamio even better. Because then it's like, it's basically like Mastermind's acquisition at that point. Whenever, after you have a bunch of cards in your graveyard. Because it's basically four mana and then draw any card you want with the minus three. If we mill over our Neoforms, uh, you know, we can go go uh, grab Neoform to have Neoform sacrifice World Shaper. Or go, gra go find a World Shaper or, you know, anything like that. Um, go grab a Krasis, like after you know we have all the lands. Go grab our our lot with giants, um, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is, yeah, if, whenever we do have a whole lot of lands in play, we can sacrifice um, all of the lands. Wait, so does this work how I, I think it does? I actually, actually, I didn't really think of it. So, like, if we have a World Shaper in play, can we just sacrifice all of our lands and World Shaper, and then draw all that many cards, and then World Shaper will trigger? After the bon after they're all sacrificed, and then they'll bring them all back. Yeah, that works like that, right? Yes, that does. Yeah, so that's sweet. So we get to do that. So that's cool. So this deck just kind of has a lot of different things going on with it. So it looks pretty interesting. I like the sideboard of like a whole bunch of like one ofs, especially whenever you have like the Tamio when you have the self mill and then Tamio to to bring it back. Having one ofs do gain you value there. So this looks really sweet. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> uh, yeah, one Jace would be really nice if you had yeah, if you had the blue sources. Need a chromatic lantern. Yeah, nice combo that rotates soon. So we got to do it right now before it rotates. So this is the time in our <clears throat> our World Shaper Neoform deck. I'm a little surprised we don't have like one Vanifar. To be like a fifth Neoform, basically. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't, so obviously with this hand, I, I could shock supplier, shock neoform the supplier immediately, but I don't think we need to neoform the, the supplier. I th especially after drawing this rejuvenator, I think we're gonna wanna like play rejuvenator and then sack rejuvenator to go grab world shaper. So let's just get some tap lands in right now. <laughs> our opponent's like looking at our cards like what what is going on here <laughs> i'm already liking this deck i mean especially because we have rejuvenator into neoform so that's strong to quite strong and this masker girl is probably going to wreck our opponent as well Key, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Bant's gonna be good. Yeah, we're gonna play Bant uh, first tomorrow. No reclamations. It it just didn't feel like Simic was really helping us out too much. Oh wow, a Slimefoot the Stowaway deck. Wow. Talk about a deck. That does not want to see Masker Girl. It's probably our opponent's deck here. <laughs> so they just have two cards left. So I'll go ahead and chump block. I guess I guess I'm not gonna neoform away uh, to go grab World Shaper. We'll just just go ahead and play this Masker Girl here. I only had one one land in my graveyard anyway right now. There's a site called whatsinstandard.com that tells you what cards are in standard and or like what sets are in standard and when, the, when they will rotate out and everything. <laughs> you hope our opponent wins? Um, All right, gonna go with the supplier here because I'm gonna just memorial to folly back the uh, Elvish Rejuvenator and next turn play Rejuvenator plus Neoform to go find World Shaper. We'll see if if we get to mill if we actually get to mill over a World Shaper though. I could, I get to just grab the World Shaper. Nope. Templar with that sub for the seventh month in a row. Let's get some hype boats in the chat for Templar. Thank you so much. That's sub number 13 on the day. Yeah, I guess we could grab Hostage Taker now. I guess we should do that. Hmm. I guess we should do that now that there's this Immortal Sun just chilling over here. I just want a world shaper though. <laughs> we don't have any uh, six CMC creatures in the deck to sack Masker Girl to find. Thalid Soothsayer. That's just kind of fun to say. Valid Soothsayer. Ooh, 
Ooh. All right, we're doing it. I mean, I guess I need to cast this first. Our opponent may just concede before we actually get to do anything, though. Yep, an entire year's worth of sets get rotated out at once. But yeah, no problem, Wicked Big. Let's do the thing. It should be whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks. I don't even think I have any five drops in my deck. No, I don't. I'm just sacking this just to sack it. Hawkeye's the best. Because my only my only five drops in the deck were the Masker Girl and the Bantu, and the Bantu is already chilling over here somewhere. Over there. So we have to put a whole lot of lands into play. So Hydro Crisis is also going to cost one less. So next turn we would be able to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We'd be able to craces for 13 next turn. So that's pretty sweet. Wait, why would... No. Wait, what? What? But... That just kills all their things. This thing's gonna die, right? Because it's a fungus. It's just gonna kill all of your things. I should have had, you know, the 3-4 and a 2-2 two -two block the 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, I think our opponent's new. Well, if they, if they watch this later... Alright, so I think it's 13. That's why I counted last turn. All right, good. And it gets, and it gets an extra plus one plus one with the help of that immortal sun. All right, two Masker Girls. The game just kind of ended whenever we played Masker Girl last time. And, yep, that looks good. I could take out my Planeswalkers if they have a Mortal Sun. But I also don't have to. Hmm. I'm going to take out Playcrafter. Making them sacrifice. Um, uh, Sapperling doesn't really seem ideal. It's 
It's more than a meow meow. So one of Hawkeye's favorite songs. I wonder if Twilight Prophet would be good enough if you didn't have to ascend, if it just had the, like, basically, would, would, would Twilight Prophet be too good if it was just, oh, keep, you have that trigger? That's probably, is it too good then? That's too strong. What if, what if that trigger is... Well, if there's no life loss or life gain, what if it's just at the beginning of your upkeep you draw a card? Will that be too strong? A four, a four mana two four flyer that at the beginning of your upkeep you draw a card. I don't know if that'd be too good. That'd probably be a, a reasonable card. We're trying to shape the world. Is that a paintbrush? Uh Kind of covering that up a little bit with the text there. I think that's a paintbrush. World painter. So do I want to play the Painter next turn? Or do I want to play this Tamiyo? And look for something. Let us have a storied battle worth Let's get this Bantu telling. back. The past is never forgotten. I feel like Bantu could be kind of important, or it could do could do some cool stuff. All right, yep. Now we're gonna get profited. Whoa! I have become too involved with my work. Killing my land. If only there was a way for me to get back a land. Now, rude. Oh no! Oh no! Never mind. Opponent so smart. I forgot that was like my only shock land. Oh, now my spells cost two more. Oh, everything's going wrong. We're getting crushed. I'm dead. Oh no! I'm dead. Good game. <laughs> I died. <laughs> yeah. Just happened, yeah. The uh, make our our spells cost two more. Destroy my only shock land. 
Just got me, Hawkeye. Yeah, Godfire Statue is a pretty sweet card. I can't get mad at losing to that card. That card's pretty cool. All right, game three, we're, we'll be on the play. I feel like our hand won't be as slow. Um, that game, I should have played World Shaper, I guess, instead of Tamiyo. Like, that, that was, like, a, the big mistake that it ended up being. You know, I didn't see foresee the destroy my land and then play God Pharaoh statue the next two turns. I didn't really foresee that happening. But if that was something that I was considering, then yeah, World Shaper would have been a better card to have in play. So I could Neoform for Fibblethip and draw two. Ah, we'll just play this thing. Because that will make sure that we hit our fourth land. I guess I should have attacked first. I couldn't really attack then, because then if I attack after I did that, then they would have just milled this land back again. So I need to attack first. And then we get to World Shaper next turn, and then we can Neoform it away and grab... Um, we can grab Masker Girl next turn. Or the, the turn after next. Yeah, you still have like three hours before you're going to eat, Hawkeye, Big Kitty. He usually sits up here like towards like the end of the stream whenever he wants food. I require lasagna. <laughs> you and me both, cat. So we want to keep milling ourselves, get this lotless giant. To do a lot of damage. This is kind of like this Song of Freelies is kind of good for us. So our opponent has five mana, so we want them to play a lot of creatures. It's like maybe they'll play more creatures here. No, not so cutest route. That's not creatures. Hey, Sea Wookiees. We're doing good. Hmm. I guess I'm just going to go get Bantu, I guess. Mask of Girl at this point doesn't really make a ton of sense. I don't know. We would mill three of Supplier, get rid of these that, that would have the Song of Fraley's thing. Now nah, I'll just get Bantu. Bantu. 
I sack this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I sack that, sack um, a watery grave. Just draw two. Draw two. Alright, well, Lotless Giant is for 10 next turn. 10's a lot of life. Bantu is menacing. That is true. We could hostage take our, our own things. We could hostage take our Bantu. Or our Lotless Giant. Okay, assuming I have the rest of the Gruel Staples, would you recommend I pick up an Immortal Sun, a Hellkite, or a Ronus? If I have one Mythic. Um Yeah, I guess I guess it really depends on on what you have of like like how do you have like any of do you not have like any of those? Like do you have do you have like zero immortal suns and hellkites and ronuses or do you have like, you know, two of some, you know, one of some, two of other, you know, like all that kind of stuff? So it's kind of hard to say. I would I would have Ronus third and then probably Immortal Sun or Hellkite. Probably one of those. And probably Hellkite, honestly. Yeah, I would yeah, because with Immortal Sun rotates, Hellkite doesn't. Probably just Hellkite. You're starting with zero of each, then yeah, Hellkite. Yeah. Just go go that way. You don't need Immortal Sun and Gruel. You can beat people down. Huh. Okay. Eleven upstairs, down to one. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? So now I get to just, I I get to just hostage take my Lotleth Giant, and then if they kill hostage taker, I get Lotleth Giant back, which kills them. Or if they don't, then I just recast it. I don't even know if I should be like really attacking with the giant. I mean, I guess it's a it's a safe attack because they have to block both things. So, they, so yeah, they can't actually kill the giant. All right, either they, you know, either they don't kill Hostage Taker and I get to just recast Lava Giant, or they kill Hostage Taker and Lava Giant just comes into play. Ooh, we could folly a Bantu, that's true. My favorite standard deck is Bant Arcbow. A deck I played last night. 
on stream. You can find it from the YouTube channel from last night. That's my favorite standard deck. All right, well, this one's already really sweet. You know, we didn't have the toughest competition there that game, but we did some cool stuff here. Yeah, this is my kind of jank, too. I'm liking this. All right, let's see what we play against here for round number two. Is it a Parhelion 2 deck? That's what it looks like from the background there. Sure, we got Fibblethip. Fibblethip's cool. Uh, yeah, YouTube channel is... here you go. Whoops. There you go. Well, that's not so good. First three draws, no lands. We were supposed to draw a land. Well, that's not good. First four draws, no lands. And Wilden Cemetery. Seek shelter in my steward. The land shall conquer you. Don't dwell on Good game. what's about to happen. Um, I honestly don't know what to do here with sideboarding with this deck for like this kind of matchup. Is Hostage Taker going to be too slow? Do I want to take out Hostage Takers? I don't feel like they're going to be too slow. It's basically just Massacre Girl again that I think I want this card. I don't really see anything else I want. I mean, I guess Disdainful Stroke counters like all their stuff in their deck, but I don't know if I want to just be holding up two mana. I'm going to take out one Hostage Taker for that Massacre Girl. Alright, game number two. Alright, same kind of thing. Can we draw a green source this time? I'm starting to think that we need more lands in this deck. I didn't really look at that before, but it says only 23 lands. I know we have these rejuvenators, but even just milling over a lot of lands is good for us anyway. Like This feels like a deck where you'd want to have a lot of lands. I was expecting that to be more like 25 than 23. Well, that Stitcher Supplier hurt us pretty bad there. All three of these draws would have been good. I mean, it's obviously just random, but... 
That hurt, because Fibblethip would have drawn us another card. Would, then there's some green sources. All right, now we're going. Now we're going. Okay, we're doing it. So, it's all, everything's good now. We are doing it. And we're going to play World Shaper next turn, and then Neo form the World Shaper into a Masker Girl. My elemental friend. <laughs> yeah, I could see taking out uh, a Stitcher Supplier for, a, for another land. That could be a good one. Everything must go. More lands. This doesn't exile it, does it? Does not exile it. The land fights for us. So I need to draw a land here. I need one more land. Come on, deck, one more land. What? You again. I am ancient, and the fabric of the multiverse obeys me. Pain is our gain. So I need another land so I could neoform away this rejuvenated grab world shaper and then play Tamyo, grab the neoform back, and then neoform the world shaper away to grab to Masker Girl. Yeah, I guess I should have side sideboarded in the Elder Spell. It's a lot of planeswalkers over there. I didn't bring in Elder Spell though. Can't really think of any way I'm going to be winning this game. Yeah, because Rascal's going to kill me. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I really have anything. Yeah. I just don't have anything to do against Vraska Ultimate. Very solid hand for our opponents. Those planeswalkers are really, really good, especially when you play them early. All right, here we go. This is a curve.
Glorospor Glorospor definitely helps with the mana situation. Um, I don't really need a second green source, I don't think. Cinder vines? Okay. We're already sideboarded over here. All right, good. No, cha no chain whirler. That's good. So this looks like a burn deck that's already pre-boarded. The moon looks intriguing tonight. To the library. There's already a crisis over there. No, I was gonna be naming Krasis with it looking like a burn deck. But there's already one in the graveyard, so I went with World Shaper. Yeah, this is Gruel Aggro, that's for sure. I need more land drops. I don't have another green source now, so I couldn't just go back and grab it again. No, not, not you. What do I want? I want Citrus Flyer. Well, now I wish I would have just said that Bantu. So we'll minus Tamiyo and grab Bantu. And then sack all of our stuff. Get it all back. All right, I'm going to have to not do auto order triggered abilities, please. I don't really want to attack with World Shaper and risk. Uh, I guess I should have played this land first. I wanted to see if I had like another green source to play, but I, I should just play the land. All right, sack, 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 sack. Yeah, I should just play the land. Do that one first, please. Give me them lands. All right, now we got lots of lands. All right, well, I do have to worry about self-milling myself too much and, like, killing myself. So I'm going to just discard these suppliers. Now that's a combo. That is a combo right there. We had five lands, and then suddenly we had, like, 20 lands. So I have 14 cards in the graveyard, 14 creatures, so now this will be 13. We'll go grab Lotlet's Giant, no tail should be discarded. deal 13, they're at 13, it's a convenient life total. 
And boom. <laughs> Thanks, Arc Jelly. Bada boom. <laughs> Thanks for the cheers there. Keeping this hype up there. Taking that first spot. So yeah, so what just happened? World Shaper, whenever World Shaper dies, you put all of your lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So we sacked, we had Bantu sacked the World Shaper and sacked all of our lands. And then we'd already been self-milling a bunch. So all the lands in our graveyard, including the ones we just sacrificed, all went into play. Yeah, who's the burn deck now? All right, we should probably have a moment of craving and some some Lebrontodons to play some defense. Maybe some Enter the God Eternals. Play some more defense. I don't think I really want Hostage Taker. Because Hostage Taker gets Lightning Striked really easily. And then as the creatures that we saw, like Branch Walker, like the creatures they saw, like all were like ETB effect creatures. I'll get rid of that Funkus Zombie. It's a lot of creatures I just got rid of though for Lawless Giant. I still have 28. We'll play one Enter the God Eternals, not two. Hey, Eddie. Got that red badge now. Nice. All right, game two. And we're going to be playing a different... Uh, a different uh, cool soul tie deck next. <laughs> oh, you need 29 more biddies. There you go. Yep, you got it. Earn that red badge. Um There you go. You got to clip it. Do it. Put that in the, the Discord highlight part, too. Um, so, yeah, up next we're going to be playing a different uh, fun Soul Tide deck where we're going to be playing Dreadhorde Invasion with Hadana's Climb. So H Hadana's Climb with a mass. You know, put, your, put another counter on like those amass tokens and everything. Yeah, today today is very Soul tie -y. Yeah, we played Golgari and then Simic and then Soul Tide, then a Soul tie. So it's just all blue, black, and green today. Yes, it will, Mage. Uh, new Mulligan rule will be implemented with Corset 2020 on Arena. Yes. Our opponent just couldn't handle it. Four of a kind? What are the odds of getting four of a kind? Can't be good, right? I have not tried Fibblethip over Growth Chamber Guardian in Bant Arcbo. I think I think Growth Chamber Guardian's a, a better card though. Even though there are times, yeah, hitting Fibblethip off of Arcbo does let you draw two. But I think the times that you just have Growth Chamber Guardian in hand. Like the one one body from Fibblethip just isn't doing anything. Um That's true, they can draw two, but I, I think you'd rather just have Branch Walker. That like Branch Walker is not you know it's explore one which is not draw one but Branch Walker has like a, a relative body either being two one or a three two not a relative body a um, yeah a relative body yeah
All right, tune one. Relevant. Yes, relevant is the word that I was looking at. Not relative. Relevant. Close. I was almost there. <laughs> Couldn't handle the four of a kind. Elvish Rejuvenator. I'm just like, hey, my hand has four of a kind. What does your hand have? No, not doesn't be four of a kind. Alright, this deck certainly needs at least one more land. Yeah, we really need one more land in here. At at the very least. Uh, nah. Oh right, I'm going first. I thought I was going second. Who came up with the name Fibble Thip? Did they fall asleep on the keyboard? Green mana. Green mana is going to be my next draw. But that doesn't mean that we will be winning the game. Hmm. That was all right. I mean, I could have molded the five, I guess. I guess. All right, well, this... That's one thing we've noticed from playing these games. 23 lands is not really an acceptable number of lands. A lot of our losses are because we just don't have... Don't have mana. There we go. Probably too late now. Probably too late now, but. It's like, if they do have Frilled Mystic, I don't really want World Shaper countered. That's an Sabotage. So they would have had Sabotage last turn. I noticed that they wouldn't have had Frilled Mystic last turn, so that's how they that's why they were willing to just tap down like that. So two cards left. Let's go with Hostage Taker some more. Oh, it was Masker Girl right there. So I'm taking up because I need to get more lands in the graveyard for this World Shaper. I guess I should have said Neoform, maybe. Or, yeah, Bantu. So do they have manipulation? They 
sure do. And now Tamio gets to get back manipulation. Let me aid your research. I don't I don't really know how we beat that combo. With them having all that mana and us having four. Bleh. Why is Krasis in our deck? Because we need something to cast with all of our mana whenever World Shaper dies. The big problem is our opponent's not trying to kill our stuff. They're stealing our stuff. And that's a really big problem for our deck. We need stuff to die, not stuff get stolen. We need World Shaper to die. find my notes helpful. Come on, opponent. All right, they manipulate the world shape around conceding. We can't win. Still can't win. All right, so we need a uh, counter magic, uh, another masker girl, and I mean, I kind of want moment of craving, rascal Bulgari queens. I have to kill like those mana creatures. Hmm. Mulder Hulk doesn't matter. I mean, Tamio is really, really strong. It's just if Tamio gets stolen, that's really bad for us. But I don't think we cut a really good card because they can steal it. Yeah, this looks to be a tough matchup. This looks kind of tough for us. All right, this is 61. No, night. Stop. What did I just get rid of? I want to get rid of you. Okay, I did just get rid of one of those. Let's get rid of another one, actually. Another one. Get this back. I mean, Tamio would be, would have been just as good for us. I wouldn't say Tamio is better for them. I mean, Tamio is just a, a great card. Whoever has Tamio is going to be doing really good. <clears throat> I mean, it is very good for them, but it's also very good for us. All right, pretty nice hand. Let's look for Neoform. Let's go Fibblethip. Start with that extra card. Hey, good call. More land. 
ones, please. That's a feel bad. Whiffing with Rejuvenator. That's a feel bad. So, finding World Shaper and turning World Shaper into. Masker Girl would be nice. Um, getting Neoform countered is horrendous. I really hope they don't counter this. Because then my creature's just gone also. But it was the, the best play that we had. So, what I was going to do there is go grab Hostage Taker and Hostage Take the Incubation Druid and then cast their Incubation Druid. That was the plan, was to grab Hostage Taker. Yeah, so this rejuvenator did nothing for us. Didn't didn't even grab us a land. It just died. We actually just discarded that rejuvenator. We paid we played three mana to put a rejuvenator in our graveyard. That's all we did. <laughs> hey Storm. Dang. Hmm. I just I have no I have no good plays. I mean crisis for three is just a waste of a crisis. Guess I'm getting another Rejuvenator to look for another land. But now I'm like out of Neoforms. Hmm. I really need them to not counter. That first Neoform. Because <laughs> it's just real unfortunate that all my cards cost two, you know? Like I. We had two drop, two drop, two drop, two drop, as far as Neoform goes. I certainly think this is getting countered. So just going for, for four is just fine. Ooh, no counter. It's just going to be manipulated. Good trade for us. Because <clears throat> hopefully that means no manipulation. I mean, well, it definitely means no manipulation, but that's a good trade for us. Awesome. I will take all of those, thank you. All 
All right, so I got three cards. Please don't find anything too cool. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of frustrating. You're like, yeah. You're like, yay, my spell's not getting st stolen. Oh, it's getting countered. Or, sorry, it's not getting countered. Yay. Oh, it's getting stolen. Well, that's not good for us. That's not good. Let us see if your talents are worth cataloging. Hmm. I was... I was kind of expecting that to get countered, honestly. Or like, I was, yeah, I was playing that to try to bait the counter out. What's going on over here? Oh no, they didn't even put a land into play? That's bad news. It means they have all spells in hand. Future. That's bad news. They have all sorts of spells in hand. Yeah, well, I mean, our, our opponent has Sinister Sabotages in their deck. They didn't have to just cast this Growth Spiral. All right, that's fine. Do, do they think that they get to cast the Hydro Crisis? Because they don't. Please make that attack. Please don't attack Tamio. No. Okay, let's see. So I have three more hostage takers. I have like, what, like two negates? Let's go with another hostage taker. Girl. Hey, Chronic Slayer. Donation day is going good. Donation deck day. Having a lot of fun.
<clears throat> well, I still have four cards over there. I don't like that. It's still a lot of cards. Is that lethal? Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Not lethal. <laughs> no, you're not bad luck. This is a this is a really tough matchup for how our deck is. Yeah, this is this is really tough for us. And our, our opponents had really good hands both games. You know, like they've had these incubation druids that they've been able to adapt and everything. Like they've they've had good hands. I would like to ask about any lunar anomalies you have experienced. I have learned much from my ancestors. So they've just gotten so much mana because of the incubation druids. <laughs> Behold, Arya Stark. Um, I like my Ban Arpo deck is really good against the. Simic Yoink deck. I haven't lost that matchup yet. Um, you got like the Tristani in the board. The you just get to play like an instant speed game, and you have like Shalai's and Frilled Mystics, kind of counter their Yoink stuff. All right, we're going to get a fortunate draw here. I don't know what that fortunate draw will be. Don't think it's Stitcher Supplier. No, my fibble tip's gone. I don't know, Jelly. Dang. Ugh. Yeah, we did. But I had some good hands. I'd all their mana creatures, you know, like the Frilled Mystics and the Sinister Sabotages. You know? They had good hands for sure. They had a couple of times, like basically both games, kind of early in like both of the games, we had like a spell that, well, maybe not necessarily the game one, but definitely that game two whenever I neoformed the rejuvenator, like we were going to be fine. Like we were going to neoform rejuvenator, get hostage taker to take one of their incubation druids, but they had the counter spell for it. And then we were just really behind after that. But yeah, opponent stealing our Tamios is difficult as we saw there. Tamio is really important to keep in the matchup though. Like minusing Tamio and grabbing stuff is really important, but yeah, it's not, Unfortunately, the that deck gets to use our Tamiyas as well very efficiently and effectively. Um, I could see, I could see playing Unmoored Egos just to, to name mass manipulation, just to try to get that out of there. But they can also just counter the Unmoored Egos, you know. But yeah, like that's that's got to be really tough for us. Yep, all the decks that I have go up on the YouTube channel. Is Neoform better than Vanifar? Well, the problem is we already have a lot of fours. Like, we have, like, this is a World Shaper deck. 
And yeah, as you see, we have a lot of fours. Like the, I think the real question is, is is Tamio better than Vanifar? And I think it is. I think Tamio getting stuff in the graveyard is really, really important. Um, honestly, I, I wasn't really that impressed with Stitcher Supplier and Glowspore Shaman. I mean, I, I know, like, the point of the deck is to... So, like, the point of the deck, of course, is to fill the graveyard for World Shaper. But maybe just relying on... I don't know, could you just rely on, like, Tamiyo to fill the graveyard? The thing is... The thing is, is like, Supplier and Shaman are just much worse than mana creatures. Like, Land of War Elf is so far better than Supplier, it's kind of ridiculous. Right? Like, you just get to, like, play this stuff earlier. Like, it's... We can't we can't really compete against like those like the mana creatures that are just like letting our opponents get so far ahead. It's it, that's really tough, honestly. So like, could this deck work if this was like Llanowar Elf and Incubation Druid, or like you could Neoform for Incubation Druid? Could you still fill your graveyard some some other way? You know, like because these cards are just pretty bad. So, like, Tamiyo is great at filling the graveyard. Tamiyo's awesome at that. Could there be something else also that's milling yourself where you could get rid of Supplier and Shaman and play Mana Creatures? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if there are other, like, really good, efficient ways to mill yourself. Yeah, I mean, Explore Package does does stuff, of course, but Explore Package gets your lands in your hand, but... Um, Ashiok? I can see Ashiok doing something. Yeah. Glowspore Shaman... See, the thing is, Glowspore Shaman doesn't give you lands. It just has your draw step be a land. But that still takes your entire draw step. It's not like Branch Walker that actually just gets you land sometimes. It still just takes your entire next draw step, which is rough. This deck really could use Seder Wayfinder. That'd be a good card. It's the better Glowspore Shaman. That card's not in standard, though. Um, but yeah, anyway, the deck was a lot of fun, for sure, and, you know, whenever we're getting to do our thing, it was really cool. I liked it. Masker Girl was incredible. Uh, yeah, I love Masker Girl in this deck because of, like, all these other creature decks and how you just don't care if your creatures are, die or, or not. Um, Hostage Shakers are really, really strong in, against that Yoink deck, because if they steal Hostage Shaker, they don't get to take the other, whatever you're hostaging. I just wish I could get, like, the Hostage Takers out, you know, because I wanted to be Hostage Taking the Incubation Druids, but we couldn't get them out early enough. You know, we had to wait till turn four, and by that time they already had, like, their Frilled Mystics all ready to go and all that kind of stuff. But I, I know I complained about, like, the 23 land. Definitely could see having a 24th land. Um, but yeah, Land of War Elf is probably just better than Supplier, right? Like, you'd still have Glowspore Shaman to self-mill yourself. Maybe just play Land of War Elf here instead of this card. That would need... You need to change your mana base, though, to support Land of War Elf, of course. Maybe you just play, like, Incubation Druid instead of Supplier. I don't know. This card's just pretty bad on its own. Then we're not really doing the self-mill stuff. Uh, what is... Are there, like... There's not, like, Star of Extinction in Soul Tie or anything like that. Like, honestly, like, what... Honestly, what the sideboard needs are, like, Ritual of Soots. Like, besides Masker Girls, like, maybe you just have, like, Ritual of Soots or something like that. Like, we need to... Because, you know, we don't care about our creatures dying... But we need, like, sweepers getting rid of, like, the opponent's stuff. That's what it feels like against against those mana creature decks. Those are tough. I don't really like Golgari Queen. I don't really want more... F I mean, I guess Ritual sets another four mana card, though. Hmm. Cry like Exiles are suppliers and things, which is kind of bad. 
Yeah, find finality can be good. How we put all these creatures in the graveyard. It's really finality is really expensive though. Um Do you think the Paradise Druid is better than Incubation? Yeah, I guess if you can't neoform into it. That's the thing. If you get to neoform into an Incubation Druid, it, it turns into being able to add th the three mana right away. But I guess if you take out the suppliers, you wouldn't be able to do that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that matchup's just pretty bad for us. Or maybe just a couple a couple to unmoored ego to unmoored ego just to name mass manipulation. That's that's probably honestly the best thing. It's just, you know, we can just keep this like the same, you know, do our thing, but just instead of these Golgari queens have unmoored egos to name mass manipulation. I think I would recommend doing that. And then the other thing is we should uh, The other thing that we need is we, we really should have a, a Command the Dreadhorde in the deck. Like, even if it's just one in the sideboard, not one in the main deck. There's there's not really a reason not to have com a Command the Dreadhorde. Like, against, like, control decks that are, like, killing all of our stuff. Like, that if you have, like, your 20 life still. Like, there should be a Command the Dreadhorde at least in the sideboard. Like, because it's just such a strong card. That could replace like the other Tamiyo or, or something like that. I don't like these counter spells at all. We just get these counter spells out of here. Like counter spells are just so bad these days with like little Ta with little Teferi. Like we saw even like the Esper Hero deck that won the GP yesterday that's playing blue had zero counter spells in the seventy five. Counter spells are just pretty bad. We get those out of there and get things like Command the Dread Horde or get more proactive things. You know, like duress. Duress is better than than the counter spell to try to protect your things. All right. That's our deck, Sultai Neoform. Um, I'd say 24th land over Stitcher Supplier. And get out, like, get rid of these for, like, two duress and a Command the Dread Horde and replace Golgari Queens with Unmoored Egos. Yeah, that sounds good. Good start there. All right, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, but that's it for Sultai Neoform. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you for another video.